all happened so fast and didn't expect the album to be that big. I was not myself. I suffered a lot of anxieties. At that moment, I thought of giving up. I thought of quitting. Even though you think that it's really hard, but it's, you know, you do. You have the power that you may not know sometimes. There's like a light in the tunnel at the end. I felt like this is probably the biggest moment of my journey. I went to the States. The first day I got in the States, I lost everything. That album was a huge hit as well. It's we sold about 700,000 copies. It was pretty big. I could definitely say Live to Love was like the most pop album that I've, that I've ever done. I remember that I really wanted to do the Asian Song Festival. I really wanted to do festivals outside of Indonesia. There were like 20 to 30,000 people, all Korean people watching in like a stadium. That was a really hard thing to do to be able to perform in a crowd that don't, don't speak my language and probably never heard of me. The crowd was so appreciative. They didn't know any words I'm singing, but they were like dancing, shouting my name, and I felt it's like one of the best feelings ever. So actually I met with uh, one of the members of Super Junior M. His name is Henry. Backstage he went to my dressing room and knocked on the door and was like, I'm Henry, actually I'm a big fan of your songs. And I was like, surprised, because how the hell did you find out about my songs, you know? A, a lot of K-pop fans in Indonesia was like, oh, Afghan is taking a picture of, with Henry. It was just a nice moment. I really felt that that was the start of me going outside of Indonesia and looking for new listeners. I was like, in my mid-twenties, I really want to show the fans that I'm becoming a mature person, you know? So I decided I really needed to jump in. I decided to write my own materials. Uh, one of the songs that I did was called X. It's a very personal song. For me, I was showing my vulnerable side to the fans. It was not as successful as the album that we did before. I felt disappointed in a way because I really put a lot of thought, like a lot of times, to the album for that album and. There's a lot of struggles that we had to encounter for this album. Because people still want to hear the old stuff and it's really hard for us to penetrate. Our new stuff, like our more urban and more like darker kind of stuff, it was just not received as well as I thought. During that album era, that Sides album era, I suffered a lot of uh, anxieties. At that moment, I thought of giving up, I thought of quitting just leave everything behind and definitely that was like the hardest part of my journey so far. I always had anxiety attacks uh, on stage and my vision get, gets blurry and I was shaking, I cannot hold the note. My body was like, my energy was all drained because of the anxiety because I pushed it through. I supposed to, I supposed to say no, that was the dark days. I decided to do the uh, Prambanan Jazz Festival. The show was running late. I was there early. I ended up performing at the same time with the international artists. They turned off the lightings, they turned off the sounds. The power was shut down in the middle of my performance. I felt as a performer that was like so disrespectful and the fans were starting to turn off their lights, flashlights for us to just keep going because we still want to hear you sing. I was so moved by that, you know. That moment really, you know, puts the anxiety even deeper. I decided to like, okay, I just need a break from all of this. Even though you think that it's really hard, but it's, you know, you, you, you have the power 
that you may not know sometime that you can go through everything overcome everything that you're facing I decided to go back to the studio and just pour out my anger and, and disappointment and all the pain that I have into writing and yeah we released our decade album it's called Decade It really resonates with the fans and the album did really well. We sold about 500,000 copies for that album. Finally, all the struggles, all the uh, rough times, really, you know, there's like a light in the tunnel at the end. So I decided why not do a tour or like a concert in uh, Star Snyan. This is actually the same venue that I went to for the Muse concert 11 years ago. Now it's time for my brain. As I was on stage that night, I was thinking, oh my god, this is where I was 11 years ago watching Muse concert and dreaming about becoming a singer. felt like this is probably the biggest moment of my journey. I ended the, uh, the first 10 years of my career in the right way, you know what I'm saying? Like, the concert was the right way to, for me to move to the next phase of my career. I went to the States for a month to get in the studio we meet up with producers and just record a, an amazing album there. The first day I got in the States, I got robbed. I lost everything that I brought from Jakarta. I lost my passport, my cash for the whole month. It was a really hard start, you know, it was a really horrible night for, for me. So at that point on, I, re I just realized instantly that I was being ungrateful. I was doubting myself too much and I should just believe in myself and just soak in the moment and be grateful for this big opportunity. And after that, until the end of the journey, it was all smooth. I was connected with all the producers. Uh, we really hit it off, you know. We wrote some great, great, amazing tunes that I'm so excited to put out to the world. I'm excited about the future, especially. I just, I just hope that this album will, will get accepted and will resonate with a lot of people in the States and all over the world. I'm always giving 100% in everything I do. I just want to be the best that I can be. Nothing's going to stop me and my ride has just started.